Good morning, YouTube. Reseller Mom here. Welcome to today's video. Today is Sunday the 18th. It's 12.15 just after lunch and it is about 80 degrees outside. So it is gorgeous today. And the last thing I want to do is really go shopping. I want to be out in the yard. Uh, but I decided I'm going to do like half shopping today and then the rest of the afternoon, evening, I will work out in my garden. We went to a farmer's market this morning and I got some tomato starts, all like heirloom and varieties that I have not tried, so I'm pretty excited about that. This week has been very busy. I don't know about you guys, but there's been a lot of problems. Today's video, I want to do a little bit of vlog, but I also want to share with you some of my... Um, I want to work on replens today and there's a problem with that because I can't really show you what my replens are because then they'd be tanked but I can show you kind of where I'm going and how I'm doing and everything so that's what today's video is going to be focused on is replenishable items and kind of how I'm beefing that up in my business so as I started out with Amazon I started out in books doing retail arbitrage um, you know just finding clearance items, did a lot of brick seek stuff. And now that I'm growing, while that stuff is still good, it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of work to just find one item here and there. And to scale that, you can buy shop, not buy shoppers, <laughs> it's not slavery, but you can hire shoppers to go out and, and train them on how to find those deals. Um, or you can build on the wholesale side of the business and online arbitrage replens and things like that. And I want to go more that route than hiring shoppers, especially with COVID times. It's just not, not a good time to hire people to shop for you. It's getting better. I got my COVID shot yesterday. I'm super excited. The first one, I'm doing the Moderna. Um, that was what was available to me. So we'll see how it goes. Didn't really have a reaction. So today I had kind of pegged it like if I'm feeling good, go sh bird just about hit my car. Uh, if I was feeling good, go shopping. But, you know, it's been hit or miss on whether people have been having reactions. I just have like a little bit of sore arm. Not really, I mean, less than a flu shot. So I'm pretty happy I did not have any reactions. All right, so back to today. I'm going to start my day off at Cost Plus World Market. And what I wanted to share with you guys though is Target. I'm going to go into Target and I'm going to get a section and I am going to scan and log. I wanna log and share with you guys how much time I spend in there. I'm going to try and log, we'll see if it works, um, how many items I scanned and different things going on with that that I can uh, think of. I'll try to like write down notes or something for you. I haven't, I haven't tried to film quite like this, but there wasn't any place that I really wanted to go shopping other than maybe some bras today. Um, and then I decided that I just really want to focus more on replenishable items and not, not that route. So that's what we're doing today. All right, World Market is our first stop to just go in and get replenishable items. World Market is good. It's hit or miss on items, whether they're in stock or not. I have done online orders with them. I have done where you order and pick it up at the store and they just bring it out to the car, which is nice as well. I wouldn't say they're reseller friendly. You're not gonna be able to use your reseller certificate. So everything that you get there, make sure you're adding on tax to your cost of goods. So if you buy something for $10 and my tax here is 10%, I need to really figure in about $11 for cost of goods because I'm not going to get it without tax here. The next store that I need to go to is Michaels and Kohl's. So I want to talk about that for a minute. Can I reach my bags? I might be able to. I always bag up my stuff and put it, um, put the receipt in there so that I don't have to go hunting around it. <laughs> go hunting for it. Kohl's I can't really show you, but it was an online order to pick up. I go through their clearance items and see what they're clearancing out. And again, I'm looking for that reduction. So if something was $6 and now it's $1 or $2, I'm looking for about a 70, 75% reduction in price. Sometimes 50%, but usually with Kohl's, it's got to be about 70%. With that in mind, I'm looking mostly at hard goods, not necessarily clothes. Online arbitrage with clothes is really hard if you don't have a UPC because different styles can vary and things like that. Clothes is just very hard to do online um, online orders with without the UPC code. Okay, so hard goods, whether that's toys, makeup, 
and I don't really get a whole lot of home things, but sometimes blankets and stuff at Kohl's, you can do keyword searches over on Amazon. And then I'm looking for any sort of, with these guys, these were like two packs of things. It was in the beauty department, so two packs. Now, unfortunately, I went and picked up my stuff. I didn't check it to the nth degree, and one of my makeup things, somebody has ripped open the top, so I can't, I can't sell that. So I will be returning that. And uh, yeah, beauty is just really hard at a lot of these stores with the clearance area because it's usually been picked picked through pretty good. So if you if you have any sort of flaw, you are opening up yourself for a used, sold as new type of claim on your account. And with a retail arbitrage type of receipt, that is really hard to get off of your account. So it's something that you need to think about and take with a grain of salt, make sure that when you get the product, it is 100% no damage, you, no scuffs. If you have to ask about it, it's not new. The other item we're returning today, and I'm going through my returns because I want you to know that my sourcing is not perfect. Your sourcing is not gonna be perfect. You're gonna make mistakes. <laughs> and uh, I like to share with you my mistakes, not to share that, you know, how bad I am at it or anything like that. I sell a lot of things that are great, but you do make mistakes. So the other, item and not necessarily mistakes these things happen it's not my fault that somebody ripped up their product and then they sold it to me Kohl's is just trying to make a buck this guy right here is hazmat and I didn't want to pay to shit to I didn't want to pay to send it in um so I'm just going to return it it's not worth my time to try and sell on another platform or anything like that I'm down in the area I can pop in return these to Michael's I, I was pretty much sure that it was going to be hazmat, but anyhow, I'll get that returned. There was something else at Michael's that's bugging me in my mind that I'm supposed to remember. You ever have that where you, you're like, oh, I need to remember something and then it just doesn't come to you? The other return that I had was, I already did at Bartels was those little toys with the buttons that speak. And what happened was I went to go list them at home and I had scanned them with the Amazon seller app. And when I went to go put them into inventory lab and I punched in my cost of goods and everything, it was not profitable. Well, I'm not gonna send something <laughs> that's not profitable. And what's been happening is the Amazon seller app has not been up to date with fees. It's not been calculating the fees well. So try to use Scatify 2 or something else if you are questioning on the fees to double check to see if it's the correct um, fees. You don't want to. You don't want to see that the fees are a dollar and really they're like eight bucks and and lose money out on those things. Okay, so I'm going to run into Cost Plus World Market. I'm going to run into Michaels and Coles. If there's anything exciting, I will show you that. If not, we're going to focus in on Target and uh, kind of an online, not an online, um, a replen type of scenario. I'm inside World Market and I found some examples of things that you should watch out for when you're scanning. So this did not come up with a UPC search. I had to do an image scan and coffee is great. Coffee can be very profitable. There's a lot of different stores that run different ads, sales on different coffees, a lot of two packs, specialty blends, etc. are great things to look out for. But this one caught my eye. I was gonna go see how much it cost because if it was, you know, six bucks, you'd make four dollars. That could be good. Again, I would double check the fees over with Scoutify, make sure they're they're good. But when I clicked on the sellers, Wildcraft Botanicals is the only seller. That's a huge, huge red flag to stay off the listing because the brand owner is the only one on there. Now you could reach out to the brand owner and say, hey, I want to sell your coffee on Amazon, see what they say, but most of the time they are not going to want to share the sales with you. Then this one, let's see if I can do this, search. That one was an auto ungate for me. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Go ahead and copy that UPC, get ungated for it if you can. Um, the more ungates you have, I feel like the more that will be open to you. So it just helps your account. This is another one, though, I can't remember who the seller was, Energy Drink Outlet, so probably not the owner. Um, this 
I think it was right around five or six dollars. So it wasn't profitable at World Market, but it's an ungate, so good to look out for. I'm in the clearance section. I'm not sure if everything is clearance. I'm having trouble trouble deciphering some of their markings. The problem with World Market is a lot of times the UPC code is covered up by by their their code or their thing. Like let me show you if this wiener dog, see how it's covered up by a world market thing. But if you do an image search, maybe. Nope, <laughs> not going to do it. So Fred is one of my favorite things to sell. So we'll just do a keyword search. Wiener dog uh, corkscrew seems to be the other keyword cork. See if he comes up. Oh boy, we got a lot of listings here. We got variations on that top hit. Yeah, it looks like that top one. Now these are $17.99 at World Market. And they're going for $7.20. So not a good deal. It appears that only the bottom shelf. Let's see if I can show you guys. Looks like just the bottom shelf is clearance and a lot of them look like they've just been chucked down here we've got a banana topper it's not gonna like the scan either we're gonna have to keyword search this one wine stopper banana bread let's see here wine stopper banana fred the world market has it for five dollars top hit up here has it for nine dollars and 52 cents so you'd actually lose about a dime on that one so you know you can go through these it doesn't look like there's really anything down there worth scanning <laughs> fred items are probably the best brand name i've seen at world market I'm going to continue over in the food department. One of the other things I was checking to see if chocolates were, I have now, uh, are, it's past the 15th, so chocolates are, we're in the multiple season and chocolates were not showing up as any FBA offers. If you do see FBA prime offers on chocolates, it's usually merchant fulfilled people that have, are in the prime program for shipping. I thought about joining that program, but I oftentimes, there's times in the summer where I can't commit to the shipping requirements, so I have not joined it. Okay, I'm going back to scanning. Maybe this will just be a shopping video for World Market. I wanted to bring up Heinz Beans. I have worked with several international people and people who have lived elsewhere, and it's great to talk to them because they often tell you about that one food that they miss from their home. And this guy that I used to eat lunch with, he loved these Heinz beans. Um, and it, he really missed it. Anyhow, saw them here at World Market, went ahead and scanned them. But this is a terrible listing for several reasons. One, look at that rank, one million. So at no point should you guys, <laughs> I don't think there's a category out there. Sometimes a book that I will go that if it's over a million, maybe there's a reason it's over a million or something, but not in health and beauty. The second thing that caught my eye is it's under health and personal care. You'll see people that create listings under kind of the wrong category because maybe they're gated in food, but they have this product that they want to sell or it's straight up drug trafficking or something that is nefarious in nature. I don't know. I have my theories on that, my conspiracy theories on some of these listings that just don't make sense. But stay away from this one. Even if it was profitable, the rank alone and the miscategorization is not good. And Amazon will go and clean this up eventually. It may not be today, may not be tomorrow, but they will clear up any double listings and listings in incorrect categories. Now, let's say if you were really serious about Heinz beans and whatnot, 
you could go request Amazon to get this switched over to grocery, take over the listing, try to get it ranked, get some advertising going. You know, that's that's an option, but for just a couple of beans on the shelf here at World Market, no way, Jose. The other thing that I'll just share with you is when I scanned it, there is, you know, a 12 pack, a 24 pack. The two pack is what would be something that I could actually do with what's on the shelf here. We've got a six pack. We've got another single down here. We've got a four pack. So when I'm looking for replenishable items, I wanna see kind of what does the store carry? How often will they restock? How many stores in my area can I get? Can I get a wholesale account? That's a you know, question too. This one, single packs of beans. Um, you know, it's 142,000 in grocery. Grocery, I like to be under 100,000 minimum, usually under 50,000. Grocery is just something that you've got to deal with expiration dates and you want kind of a high turnover. You don't want these beans sitting on the shelf for a long time. Anyhow, enough talk about beans, moving on. I am done with Target, let's go over numbers because that's what I want to kind of give to you guys an idea of what I find or what I get in about an hour's worth of scanning. So it was probably like an hour and 10 minutes maybe and then another 10 minutes to check out. It's currently 325, but we'll say a good hour of scanning. Now I did um, get a couple of personal items in the cart. They had water shoes came out and I bought a kayak yesterday, so I'm super excited. So I wanted to get a pair of those. Um, but pretty much I would say 95% of the time in my Target visit was looking for replens. I did get a few replenishables. So let's go through numbers. So in, we'll just call it an hour. I scanned with the Amazon seller app, 39 different things. With Inventory Labs Scoutify, I did 15 different scans. Some could have been the same because I was check, double checking fees and whatnot. Uh, so what is that? About 46 different scans just got somebody pulling up next to me. So we'll say 40, 45 scans in an hour. That is, you know, a scan every other minute going around the store. It's a lot of scanning. You know, 46 scans though is really not that much compared to how much stuff is on Amazon and how many rabbit holes you can go down. But if you are scanning, we'll just say, you know, 45 items an hour and you do 10 hours a week of that, you know, you're gonna start seeing a lot of different things that opportunities out there. Okay, so out of four, we'll just say 40 scans because I know some of them were duplicates. Out of 40 scans, I found four possible replenishable items. Out of those four possible replenishable items, I picked up either one or two of them to test out. And what I'll do is I'll bring that product home. I will uh, process it, send it into Amazon, see how it, goes packaging it up um, and if it actually sells for that look at the keep a chart a little bit more and if I can I will look to see if I can find it in other stores cheaper sometimes I'll find replans at Target and I'll find it cheaper over at Walmart or I find it in better quantities at a different location so on some things let's say it's selling a single pack at Target but on Amazon I'm gonna do a two pack and I can buy it by the case somewhere else it leads me down to just making something that was sort of good much much better when i was in there scanning i scanned home section toy section and pretty much food section i did not make it to beauty area i ran out of time i, I went one way around the store and beauty was the last and i was pretty much out of time by the time i got to it but just cherry picking and focusing in on things that i haven't scanned before um, new products, anything that was seasonal, that was catching my eye, did not scan any meltable type of products, um, kind of skip it over those for right now. Also looked for things that were on sale or on discount. A lot of times my replens need to be on sale at Target to make it worth my while. I also need to factor in 10% tax, which is a little rough, but you know, that's, that's just what it is at Target. They do not take reseller permits. They do not like resellers, so you have to be a little on the down low when you're in there scanning and not as um, not as apparent. Usually, I don't think anybody has ever really bothered me in Target, but I don't 
try to stick out either, if you know what I mean. All right. Um, okay. So I got four replens to try out. I restocked two replens that I currently have been doing for months and months and months. So I found those, got those into the cart. So six total different ASINs, four that are new to me. I got ungated for at least six more things. So that was great. Um, uh, you know, the more you can ungate for, the better. If you're in there scanning games, games would seem to be the one that hit the most ungates, that section, just board games and whatnot. There was a lot in there that I was able to get auto ungated for. So don't, those are all wins. Like that might not be a good replan, but if you can get ungated for things as you're sourcing, those are all good things for your account to be doing. That's it, I think I've shared everything with you. Total spent, I can't remember how much I spent. I could look it up really quick. I'm trying to think if there was anything else. So we'll say an hour of scanning, 45 scans, four replens, two restocks, and my total bill going out was $77. So not very much, but these replens, a lot of my target replens, I just order in either um, pick up or have shipped delivered. Ship does add a little bit, to your bill, but it's cheaper than getting an employee to go shopping for you. That's for sure. Um, you got to kind of play around with different services and see what makes, what you can improve your business with that will help you grow without, you know, cloning yourself because that's what it comes down to. You're, you get to a point where there's only so much you can do in a day and you need to get help either in the form of software or a third party service or uh, an employee of some sort. So um, that's it. I think, I think I'm done. I think I'm going to go play in the dirt now. Um, I'm going to go plant me some tomatoes and have a relaxing night. So take care guys. Have a great day. I was driving home and I forgot to mention the ROI and the profit range for my target replens, which I think is important for replenishable items that are easy to get and flip over fast and are, are, um, you know, just a fast moving, easy thing to do, I go for 30% or better on ROI. That means that if I spend $10 on an item, I want to make back $3 or more in profits. My grocery replens and pretty much most of my target replens are anywhere from proper profit range of two or three dollars to maybe six to ten dollars depending on the item. So the sweet spot is usually about five, but if it's a fairly easy one, you know, I will go down to just a couple dollars profit. Your range needs to be whatever you want it to be. So if you're comfortable making a dollar, make a dollar. If you're comfortable with a five dollar minimum, then have a five dollar minimum. The thing is, is when you go out and you're sourcing, gosh, this street's busy. When you're going out sourcing, finding things with your minimum may be really easy, may not be easy, so you may need to adjust accordingly. And of course, my parameters change depending on what store I'm at and what category I'm at. For shoes, obviously I wanna make more money. I'm not gonna settle for $2 profit on shoes. Usually my profit range for shoes is about $10 minimum because I'm selling higher end type items candy bars or fruit snacks or whatever grocery we plan, yeah, I'm usually okay making two bucks off a $4 purchase because it's an easy flip and I can do a lot of the order and pick up or order and be delivered or order in case quantities. Um, and it's a slap it in a bag, put on a sticker and go type of item. For items that require more packaging and whatnot, I'm going to have a little bit higher thresholds. So your thresholds don't have to be one across the board. Mine are certainly not. I, I start off reselling and I'm like, I'm going to have this very strict like SOP and these standards and whatnot. And then I got out there and started scanning. I'm like, yeah, I need to be more flexible <laughs> and need to make profit and go with the changes and go with the seasons and go with, you know, the trends and everything like that to, to make it work. I can't be very rigid in this business. And I think COVID has really shown us that too. Companies who are very rigid and it wasn't working during COVID times are shutting their doors. So learn to go with the flow some more. All right, now I am leaving. Take care guys.